We're going to start writing quick vocabulary. Jay is uh, currently not available as he's preparing to take the uh, GMAT. Uh, so he will be gone for the next uh, two weeks as we release these episodes. And uh, with that, we will get into the words. So the first word is retrodict. And that is to utilize present information or ideas to infer or explain a past event or state of affairs. Uh, example, geologists have retrodicted the position of the continents millions of years ago. That is retrodict to utilize, present information or ideas to infer or explain a past event or state of affairs. And when I looked this up on the etymology dictionary, there was nothing there. So no etymology. Next word is mansuetude. That is M-A-N-S-U-E T-U-D-E, mensuintude, and it is a quality or state of being gentle, meekness, tameness. Uh, an example, he has spied over the plateau, the old brown villa itself, rich in memories of one after another of the family of the Antoines. As he approached it, such reminiscences crowded upon him, above all of the life there of the age Antoine Pius in its wonderful mansuetude and calm. That was not a useful example to me. <laughs> That's mansuetude. It's a noun, and it is a quality or state of being gentle, meekness, or tame. It is from the Latin mansuetudo, meaning tameness, mildness, or gentleness, and uh, comes from the past participle masuesser, to tame, or to accustom the land. From manis, which is hand, sesura, to accustom, habituate. Uh, contrite, it's an adjective. Feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for a sin or shortcoming. Uh, example. York did, in fact, say he was sorry and was contrite about making that mistake. Contrite, it's an adjective. Feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for a sin or shortcoming. Contrite. It's uh, from the 1300s Old French, which is cantrit, uh, which comes directly from the Latin cantitras, which means worn out or ground to pieces. And then, of course, the past participle contrera, which is to grind and uh, to grind together. So that is uh, kind of where it comes from to uh, to grind down. I can kind of see the connection there, but I feel like the word has changed a lot. And next word, synchronicity. The quality or fact of being synchronous. The coincidental occurrence of events, especially psychic events, as similar thoughts in widely separated persons or mental image of an unexpected event before it happens that seem related but are not explained by conventional mechanisms of causality, used especially in the psychology of Carl Jung. Uh, examples. Part of the beauty of this set lay in the way Peterson, Sample, and Hall functioned as a single rhythmic organism, their long years of partnership evidented in the imperbable synchronicity of their work. So that is synchronicity, it's a noun. The coincidental occurrence of events, especially psychic events that seem related but are not explained by conventional mechanisms of causality. It's used especially in the psychology of Carl Jung. And, uh, so it's actually a word from 1953 that Jung had kind of, uh, malformed, uh, thinking that it came from synchronism. So, and then there was a similar word in the 1889, but, uh, yeah, so it does seem like, uh, it was really created in, in the 19, in 53. So there's not history to the word. It is a fair, fairly new word. Our last word is, Leonine, that's L-E-O-N-I-N-E, -E, Leonine. Of, relating to, suggestive of, or resembling a lion. Uh, Jamie has a leonine aspect, with a high clear brow, soft curls, ebbing over his ears and along his collar. That is leonine. Of, relating to, suggestive of, or resembling a lion. From French, meaning the same thing, like a lion. Yeah, so not a lot of history on that word. We didn't have very good etymology this week. Okay, our poem for this week is to Mrs. King, on her kind present to the author, a patchwork counterpane of her own making. This is by William, William Cowper. 
the bard, if e'er he feel it all, make sure be quickened by a call, both on his heart and head, to pay with tuneful thanks the care and kindness of a lady fair, who deigns to deck his bed. A bed like this in ancient time, in Idna's barren top sublime, as Homer's epic shows, composed of sweetest vernal flowers, without the aid of a sun or showers, for Jove and Juno rose. Less beautiful, however gay, in that which in the scorching day receives the weary swain, who, laying his long scythe aside, sleeps on some bank with daisies pied, till roused to toil again. What labors of the loom I see, looms numberless, have grown for me. Should every maiden come to scramble for the patch that bears, an impress of the robe she wears, the bell would toll for some. And oh, what havoc would ensure this bright display of every hue, all in a moment fled, as if a storm should strip the bowers. Of all their tendrils, leaves, and flowers, each pocketing a shred. Thanks then to every gentle fair, who will not come to peck me bare, as bird of borrowed feather, and thanks to one above them all, the gentle fair of Purton Hall, who put the whole together. All right, that's it for our quick vocab vocabulary and poetry for this week, and thanks for listening. <laughs>